Let's start topic 2 for this session. In this topic, we'll be seeing a certain financial goals. Now, we are clear with what is finance all about. Now, we say studying finance, whatever you do about acquiring funds, investing funds, distribution of funds or liquidity of funds, whatever you do in finance has two goals to be met at the end. You talk about acquiring funds, you talk about investing your money, seeing how the money is to be distributed back to the owner or retained back in the business or you talk about getting the funds for day-to-day -day working. In short, you have to see in short as that goal of finance is met at every four stages in short. And what are the two goals of finance? We have two goals of finance. One is profit maximization, other is wealth maximization. Now, profit ma maximization you can say is a more traditional goal it has been evolved over time and now we call it as a wealth maximization some companies say that profit maximization wealth maximization both have to be taken into consideration when we talk about financial aspects whatever but let us see what are these goals all about now now the first goal of finance is profit maximization now, which profit am i talking about now when i talk about profit normally i talk about is profit after tax that is a net profit of a company many people say that Judging finance, we are talking about acquiring funds, investing, distribution, liquidity. See at the end, your company increases in profitability point of view. The profits of the company shoot up, right? Quarterly wise, yearly wise, whatever. At the end, when I see the profits of the company have increased, right? So many people go for profit maximization are the object. And there are various reasons for the same. Because main aim of any company business activity is what? To earn profit, right? It is a parameter you can say of a business enterprise. It helps us in reducing risk. It is the main source of of all of you can say motivation factor among the company. Similarly, profit also helps us meet our other needs of an organization. People think profit is a very good parameter to help us, but there are various drawbacks of profit. Profit maximization. If you see practically, companies today no fo not focus on profit maximization on its own. They cater to wealth maximization and other objectives as well. Why? If you see today, see why do you start a business? If you start a business, why will you start a business? So that you get some returns, you get some profits, right? But many people do not support this objective of profit maximization. When they say that profit and concept is a very vague thing. Now, vague thing means if you see profit means different things to different people. If I ask you for a company, which profit is more important, gross profit or net profit? And there's so many profits, right? There's earnings before interest and tax, there's profit before tax, there's profit after tax, there's also gross profit of a company, there's operating profit, there's earnings with profit given to shareholders at the end. So profits mean different things to different people. For example, if I am a shareholder in a company, which profit would I be interested in? Profit which I'll be getting, profit available to equity shareholder. Some people, for example, lenders and borrowers, what will they be interested in? Profit after tax. So profit, if you see, mean different things to different people. I can't say it can be just a complete parameter on its own. Because different people will get different context out of it. Right? That's why they say profit is a very vague concept. That's why today companies don't take profit as a objective because it means different things to different people. Similarly, profit they also say does not ignore the time value of money. It ignores time value of money. If I say we'll be seeing in the other rules as well what is time value of money. We'll be going through present value and future value of money. Time value of money say money in hand is more important. For example, if I say you invest your money. If you invest your money, the business may give you profit of 10,000 after one year, 20,000 after two years. You'll be like fine, one year, two year I understand. But what is the value of money in today's term? Right? And that is time value of money. Value of money in hand is more important for everyone. Similarly, different drawbacks of profit maximization are there. That's why because of different drawbacks of profit maximization, we have another goal of finance that is wealth maximization. Wealth maximization actually came into picture was only because it's a complete objective. It helps you in earning profit also and all the parties in a company are also satisfied. Now, what do I mean by wealth? Wealth maximization, when I talk about this, I talk about the wealth of an equity shareholder. Now, we'll be seeing what are equity shares, what are preference shares, what are debentures and bonds. We'll be seeing that the real owners of a company, just understand this point of time. I'll be taking to the sources, we'll go deep into shares and all. This point of time, just understand that the real owner of a company is an equity shareholder. Right? And his money is being traded in a stock market. Right now, when his money is being traded in a stock market for an SA equity shareholder is a real owner of a company, and his money is being traded in a stock market. Now, for example, if I say 
you bought share of a company for 100 rupees example okay now tell me the 100 rupees share if you see the stock market has gone by 120 rupees what happened you made a profit of 20 rupees on your share like this shareholders are the real owners of the company what happened if the share price goes up what happened the value of a share increases and what happened the value of a shareholder increases think tomorrow some turmoil happens in a company your 100 rupees share becomes 80 rupees 70 rupees what will happen shareholders value will go down right now that's why we today we all focus on focus on the share value the share price should go up and see the how shares are traded shares are traded look into various aspects i just can't control the share price when you go to stock markets you'll see there are various factors which govern the share price your internal working of a company demand supply your profitability position your future prospects everything govern the share price of your company right for example if i say i go to the market i want to buy a company i want to buy a company which is a loss making company in short tell me what will happen to shareholders they quit my company and go they say the loss of that company will come to our company why should we stick to this company it's better we go and invest our money in somewhere else right that's why if you see our future prospects our management decisions what is our plans for the future depends upon all wealth maximization plays a role and shareholders value takes into consideration all of that in short that's why people favor wealth maximization for various reasons you can say it is superior to profit maximization right because it considers the wealth of the shareholders similarly it considers the comparison of the value of the come to be associated with the business concern similarly we can get to know the total value of a company the total value in short which you can get from the total cost incurred for the business operations similarly it takes into account all the aspects the time value of money the risk part similarly it ensures the all the objectives are met at the end right it ensures your resources are effectively utilized and you can actually see it happening in the market the share price going up and down and value of a share increase in short that's why wealth maximization we say is a more better objective and it covers your profits the profits of a company are going of course your company will go good shareholders will benefit and how it will be reflected in the share price in the market which is going on but still there are so many disadvantages of wealth maximization as well different people do not favor it as well Similarly, say it just focus on a shareholder. So management alone enjoy the benefits. Similarly, it creates ownership management controversy over there. Similarly, they say well, this wealth management is nothing new. Wealth maximization is nothing new. It just another name for profit maximization. So just indirectly we are saying it. It's just one and the same thing, right? Similarly, this some people say it is not practically possible. But whatever the arguments for today. All companies look at wealth maximization. We can say profit and wealth can go both hand in hand, but wealth maximization has a broader concept. It covers the full company as its own. And when you go deep into it, you'll see the owner should be benefited at the end. See, when you start a small business on it, what do you see? You as an owner should be benefited. And for a company which is bigger in nature, see, in this model, we'll be seeing about big companies' point of view. Go to the markets, you want million, billions at one shot. For them, the owners are scattered and for them, the owners can be from any walk of life, right? We'll be targeting those companies and we'll be saying how they meet their objectives and their objective is not a one owner. So, they, are, they for them, wealth maximization is a more better objective. The two goals of finance, we talk about acquiring, investing, distribution, liquidity, see at the end that the goals of finance or wealth maximization are met at the end.